Horror is possibly the most diverse genre in the realm of video games. The majority of the games I've analysed on this channel have been horror games, solely due to the fact that these games usually have intricate gameplay, interesting stories to tell, and offer the player a chance to immerse themselves in humanity's most primal emotion. Fear. I love horror games, and within horror lies a very unique subgenre, survival horror, and one franchise towers above the rest for not only popularising it, but revolutionising it in the years gone by. Resident Evil was conceived in 1996, with the original releasing on the Sony PlayStation 1. It was a smash hit, skyrocketing a franchise that has continued on well up until now, with the recent release of Resident Evil 8, Village. The games have revolutionised horror with the adaptation of survival horror mechanics, which originated from Alone in the Dark. Survival horror is a subgenre of horror in which conservation is paramount. In Resident Evil 1, ammo, health and key items were scattered around the mansion you explored. With limited inventory space, a host of zombies and mutated animals as well as biological weapons roaming the halls, it was a very tense experience. Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it! Don't open that door! Hey, stop! Well... Maybe intense is too strong of a word. For all Resident Evil 1 did to expand horror and survival horror, the game hasn't aged gracefully, with shoddy dialogue, static backgrounds and some very 90s full motion video cutscenes. Resident Evil only really caused shockwaves at the time because of how new survival horror was. As the games went on, it became increasingly clear that Resident Evil's grip on the horror community was slipping with games like Fatal Frame, Forbidden Siren, and my favourite of the bunch, Silent Hill coming on the scene, Resident Evil needed to branch out if it was going to stay afloat. By the time Resident Evil 4 came along, Resident Evil needed a big success. A big success. Because riding on the back of Resident Evil 4 was the fate of the entire franchise, with Capcom ready to pull the plug if Resident Evil 4 flopped. So, how did it do? Here are the sales figures, here are the scores it received, here are the consoles it ported to, here are the versions I own. Resident Evil 4 was a huge success. And you know what? It absolutely deserves it. I've mentioned Resident Evil 4 before in my Condemned Criminal Origins video. Having been released in January 2005, it was released during a fantastic year for horror games, and of the games that released in 2005, Resident Evil 4 is my favourite of the bunch. With the sales figures, as well as all the other indications that this game was a success in mind, it may be a bit confusing to hear that Resident Evil 4 is still a massively divisive title among the fans of the series. To be honest, I haven't exactly been very forthcoming, because Resident Evil 4 isn't a horror game. It's a horror game that leans heavily toward the action side of things. That may lead to some confusion, as I still believe in the title of this analysis, that being that Resident Evil 4 is survival horror's finest hour. Let me explain. Resident Evil 4 was released during a time when the survival horror genre was, unfortunately, dying out. As the 2010s were rapidly approaching, we saw a whole host of military-themed shooters with the Call of Duty franchise 
and an interest in more open world games with the huge success of Grand Theft Auto 4 and Saints Row. Horror games as a whole were being sidelined and the genre wouldn't really recover for a good few years after Resident Evil 4's release. Resident Evil 5, 6 and Raccoon City all leaned more towards the action set pieces with a huge lack of tension or horror implemented. Thus, Resident Evil 4 was, in a way, survival horror's last hurrah. Whilst Resident Evil 4 embraced more action heavy elements, there are still enough moments of horror and suspense in there to call it a classic survival horror experience. But that's enough about Resident Evil 4's impact. Instead, let's explore what the game actually has to offer. Set in a rural Spanish village, Mr. Leon Scott Kennedy has been assigned a very important mission on behalf of the US President. Rescue his missing daughter, Ashley Graham. After his stellar performance during the Raccoon City incident, he became a very valuable operative, hence why he's been entrusted with the rescue of the President's daughter. Upon questioning a local about Ashley's whereabouts, he gets a less than concrete answer. I was wondering if he might recognize a girl in this photograph. ¿Qué carajo estás haciendo aquí? ¡Lárgate, cabrón! Sorry to have bothered you. Freeze! I said freeze! With this, the entire village turns on Leon. His police escort is gone, the bridge out is destroyed, and a whole host of crazed villagers are now after him. Players will need to hunker down and defend themselves against waves of villagers. After this attack, the villagers are suddenly drawn to the church in the distance, upon the bell being rung. Leon then exits the house he was defending and says, Where's everyone going? Bingo? Now, past this, I won't be exploring the plot of Resident Evil 4, mainly because, well, what the fuck am I supposed to talk about? Resident Evil 4 is filled to the brim with the finest of cheese. It's filled with action, one-liners, and a plot about a larger-than-life agent rescuing the president's daughter. There really aren't any nuances or intricacies with Resident Evil 4's plot. Then again, the Resident Evil games were never really known for having the most tightly knit plot lines. Instead, let's analyse what the Resident Evil games have done consistently well. The gameplay. Resident Evil 4 was a big step up from the gameplay of previous Resident Evil games. One notable gameplay quirk absent from Resident Evil 4 is that of the change in camera angles. As opposed to the classic camera angles of Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 4 favoured third person over the shoulder angle. I have a love-hate relationship with this change. On the one hand, we've lost a lot of the horror and tension present in previous games, the lingering fear that at any moment a zombie could jump out and attack us. In Resident Evil 4, much of that horror and suspense is gone in regard to the camera angles, as we can clearly see what's around that next corner. However, this relationship is definitely more of love than hate. While the suspense of dreading what's around the next corner is gone, Resident Evil 4's third person over the shoulder camera has gone on to be an extremely influential mechanic, replicated in games such as Dead Space and Deadly Premonition. The camera certainly has its moments where it can be unresponsive and trail off in a completely different direction while you're trying to aim at an enemy, but it's not nearly often enough that you'll become frustrated with it. Fancy camera work will only get you so far though. A game like Resident Evil 4 is going to need some satisfying and intuitive gunplay to back it up, 
and I'm happy to say that not only is Resident Evil 4's gunplay extremely fun and easy to use, it is the best implementation of gunplay I've seen in a game. Seriously, whether it's on the Wii, the PlayStation, the GameCube, so on, it's absolutely top of its class. This is likely one of the main reasons why people enjoy Resident Evil 4 so much. The game offers an extremely fun and functional way of dispatching your enemies. And it's no good mentioning the gunplay without discussing Resident Evil 4's weapon roster. Resident Evil 4 is also every gun nut's wet dream. Mausers, Remingtons, RPGs, TMPs, the list goes on. Resident Evil 4 has a whole host of fun and creative weapons at Leon's disposal. Each weapon of course, much like previous Resident Evil games, has a unique ammo type for each weapon, with Leon needing to manage his ammo well so as not to run out in the heat of battle. As well as this, health items, grenades and the guns themselves can also be managed so as to ensure you have enough space in your attaché case. This case can of course be upgraded to accommodate more items, but even I find myself running out of space often. Previous Resident Evil games would have a few squares in which you could store items. Once those were full, you would need to find a chest around the mansion and store any other items there while removing others and placing them in your inventory. I was never a huge fan of this mechanic as it can be extremely frustrating to have to run and find a chest because you couldn't pick up a key item. In Resident Evil 4, this was never an issue because key items have their own separate tab and of course, what Resident Evil 4 analysis would be complete without discussing, objectively, the best merchant in any game, hands down. Got something that might interest you. <laughs> Mr. Merchant here has all your destructive and preservative needs. The Merchant of Resident Evil 4 offers a wide selection of firearms, upgrades and will gladly buy any merchandise you get your hands on, ranging from ammunition to treasure around the map. The treasure and money you collect from dead bodies and all around the map will be your primary source of income through the game. Treasure can even be combined to raise the value of certain items. For example, right here I found a cat statue. Now, at the moment, the cat statue has a couple of indentations that can be filled out. So if I was to find a series of jewels to put in the cat, that would automatically put the value up. Thus, when I sell it to the merchant, I'll get a lot more bang for my buck. Getting back to Resident Evil 4's gunplay, I wanted to talk a little bit about the actual combat. Resident Evil 4, as well as having satisfying gunplay, also has some very satisfying and responsive combat. The best of which being its headshots. I'll even go as far as to say that Resident Evil 4 probably has the most satisfying headshots ever. And why is that? Chunks. Nothing but chunks. <laughs> As satisfying as it is to get a really meaty, chunky headshot, the game can sometimes be a bit of a tease in this regard. On many occasions, I've blasted a Ganado's head with a shotgun, only for it to tickle him as opposed to blow his fucking head off, as any self-respecting shotgun should do. However, this isn't enough to detract from my killing spree as a whole, because at the end of the day, Resident Evil 4's combat is still really well done. It even includes a quick access knife to kill downed enemies, as opposed to wasting ammo while finishing them off. On the whole, Resident Evil 4's gameplay is really, really fun, and I'll sing its praise till the day I die. As is the case with any Resident Evil game worth its salt, Resident Evil 4 has waves of creatively grotesque and deranged enemies that want nothing more than to plaster Leon's face to a wall. All the Resident Evil games up as far as Resident Evil 4 stuck to the series tradition of having you fight zombies, along with zombie variants. There were of course some exceptions to this, including Yawn the Giant Snake, the Tyrant, Mr. X, and so on. But for the most part, the Resident Evil series was famous for its take on the zombie genre. 
Resident Evil 4 changed this up, as Ganados, cultists and militia members retained the ability to speak and displayed some level of intelligence. This is because unlike the T-Virus of previous Resident Evil games, the general populace of bumfuck nowhere Spain have been infected with Las Plagas, a parasite that works by being injected into the host wherein the eggs will hatch roughly within 24 hours of exposure. Once hatched, the victims of Las Plagas will be under the complete control of Osman Sadler, the main antagonist of Resident Evil 4. And, well, I suppose Salazar is there too. Salazar certainly has some degree of power, but overall, Sadler is the one who controls Las Plagas. The Plagas comes in many variants, ranging from the standard yuck variant to what the fuck is that? Each time Leon does a certain level of damage to an enemy or headshots them, there's a chance the hatched Plagas parasite will emerge from their neck and attack Leon. Plagas aren't exclusively icky neck murder thingies, they can also come in a variety of shapes and sizes, however these are only basic enemy types. The real meat of Resident Evil 4's enemy design comes in the form of what I believe to be the three most effective enemy types in the game. Firstly, we have Verdugo. Hello, uh, Future Emmett here editing the video. I just want everyone to know that if you haven't played Resident Evil 4 before, I'm going to be spoiling three, well, technically two enemy types, because the, the one there's another one coming up that's pretty much at the start of the game. But there are two enemy types here that have a really cool, intense section uh, for you to play through. So, just a quick spoiler alert, if you don't want to have that spoiled for you, click off the video now. You, you cheeky cheeky monkey. Two of these creatures serve as Salazar's personal guard, and during another failed attempt on Leon's life on Salazar's behalf, Salazar sends his right hand to dispose of Leon. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? <laughs> <laughs> the next section sees Leon desperately attempt to survive the Verdugo's attack. Seeing as it has a ridiculously large amount of health, it's nearly impossible to fight back. Instead, Leon will need to tip over canisters of liquid nitrogen to freeze it in place temporarily and make a run for a new section of the sewers. All the while, the elevator is slowly coming to pick Leon up. This is easily one of, if not the most nerve-wracking section of Resident Evil 4. The Verdugo is incredibly fast, and on some occasions can sprint towards Leon and take his head clean off in one swing. It makes your arsehole absolutely clench like nothing else when you hear the distant thud 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 of it making a run for Leon. Coming back to the game for the first time in four years and playing through the story again was a very regrettable decision once arriving at this section. However, the sigh of relief when you get on that elevator is like nothing else. Moving on to our next enemy type, we have the Regenerators, easily a contender for the scariest enemy type in the entire series. Regenerators literally translate to Regenerators in English. Their introduction during the island section of Resident Evil 4 is a very slow and methodical one. While exploring the base on Sadler's Island, you'll inevitably come across what looks to be an operating theatre of some kind. And inside a cramped chamber, you see a dead creature with ash skin and a very disproportionate body. But it's the furthest thing from your mind, because you're too busy solving this puzzle. Once inside the operating room, Leon snatches up a keycard. And then... You hear it. This is the Regenerador. You instinctively throw a grenade at it. Its body contorts back into place. You try another one, but it does nothing. You lay into it with your SMG, desperately blowing off arms, legs, even its head, but it just rides on the ground until you finally fill it full of enough bullets.
Before you know it, more of them have broken out of containment and have scattered all around the building. You waste whole arsenals worth of ammunition and explosives trying to kill them, and before you know it, there's another one waiting for you. It's an extremely panic-inducing section, as you waste all your ammo desperately trying to kill them. In this same area, you do happen to find an infrared scope, which lets you see the Plaga's parasites in their body. Firing at these weak spots will kill them in no time, so it's a must-have. Both the Regeneradors and Verdugo are infamous for making first-time players shit themselves into a coma. But they are a relatively rare sight. The Regeneradors only appear in three sections of the game, with the Iron Maiden variant only making two. The Verdugo only makes an appearance in the sewer. In fact, if you're really intent on wasting ammo, you can actually kill it. But this is understandable. These monsters were primarily created to keep the horror and tension high. Overusing them would just ruin their impact. So, unfortunately, it seems as though these are the only real moments of tension in the game. Oh yeah, him. Meet Mr. Salvador, the chainsaw-wielding maniac of Resident Evil 4. This enemy has become an icon. Seen on promotional material, on the front cover of the box, Mr. Salvador is Resident Evil 4's mascot, and for a good reason. This is one of the few enemies that really instills a sense of panic, anger and horror, just by existing. And you know what? I'll say it. Mr. Salvador is my favourite enemy in the entire Resident Evil series. Controversial statement, but I stand by it. Resident Evil is a series full of really creative and horrific enemy design. But there's something so... vicious about Mr. Salvador. Resident Evil 4, for the most part, is a game full of monsters. So it makes for a really frightening change to be chased by a violently deranged psychopath with a chainsaw. Even the death animation is so visceral. Leon gurgling on his severed windpipe followed by a sharp splat as his head comes off was really shocking to see. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude when it comes to violence in video games, but even I have to admit this is really fucking disgusting. I think it goes without saying that Resident Evil 4 has absolutely phenomenal enemy design, and for those of you that still think Resident Evil 4 is a bad horror game, you may be onto something, but consider the following. As I've made clear by now, Resident Evil 4 is set in a rural Spanish village. The village section of Resident Evil 4 has a variety of different areas, such as this canyon, the lake, the church, and so on. There are also other areas to explore, such as the castle and Sadler's Island, all of which have their own unique enemies and set pieces. For example, in the village you'll find yourself taking on ganados for the most part, which funnily enough translates to cattle in English. The village itself gives off this very Innsmouth kind of vibe, and much like Lovecraft's story, the villagers don't take too kindly to visitors. The absolute filth on display also adds to the discomfort, with much of the furniture covered in grime, rotting food on the tables, and a general disregard for any sort of hygiene protocol. It also doesn't help that the village is filled with bear traps and explosive wires, this really makes you second guess every bit of grass you walk past and corner you cross. This tension continues all the way through to the castle and island sections of Resident Evil 4. There are even a lot of environmental activities, such as shooting fish. <laughs> Fishies. You can even shoot them at the lake. <laughs> Fishies. <laughs> oh God! There are also some more unsettling moments. A good example is the bag in the prison. 
When you open a rubbish bin and look inside, you find this bag that suddenly starts twitching violently. And then, that's it. You never find out what was in the bag. It's just an unsettling piece of environmental storytelling. Couple this with the meat hooks and Regenerador, and you know something terrible has happened here, without the game needing to explain. That's kind of how I feel about Resident Evil 4's environment in general. It's showing, not telling. You get one look at the state of some of these locations, and you know something terrible has happened. So, in regards to its environments, I think Resident Evil 4 checks out fine. It's horrific, tense, and it constantly has you on your toes. Resident Evil 4 also has a fantastic soundtrack, which is odd because generally you don't notice it while you're playing. Resident Evil 4 can often be a very quiet game, however, when Resident Evil 4's soundtrack does come through, it's an absolute treat to listen to. Some of my personal favourites include Ada's music, The Regenerador's theme. And my personal favourite, The Merchant's theme, otherwise known as Serenity. Generally, when I do these analysis type videos, I try to bring up the soundtrack as much as possible. When it comes to games, audio can be just as important as video, and thankfully, Resident Evil 4 has some really good sound design paired with a great soundtrack, even if sometimes you don't notice it all that much. And of course, what Resident Evil game would be complete without unlockables? On a first time playthrough, Leon will unlock his classic Matilda pistol from Resident Evil 2, and the infinite rocket launcher. He'll also earn two new costumes, one for him and one for Ashley. By completing the separate ways game mode, Leon will earn the Chicago typewriter with infinite ammo and a pair of costumes for him and Ashley. The knight armor even makes Ashley invulnerable to damage. The hand cannon is unlocked by beating the mercenaries game mode with a 5 star rank on all stages with all characters. Finally, the PRL 412 is earned by beating Resident Evil 4 on the professional difficulty. Unfortunately, I haven't earned this just yet, but it's a work in progress. As mentioned before, Resident Evil 4 also has bonus game modes. First up, we have Assignment Ada. This game mode sees Ada Wong from Resident Evil 2 attempting to retrieve 5 Plaga samples from the island. Personally, I was never a big fan of this game mode. On top of this, it's a fairly brief one, but I'd still say it's worth your time. Next up, we have Separate Ways. This game mode again has us playing as Ada as we see what she was up to during the events of Leon's campaign. It's another short little side story that'll take you roughly 2 hours to complete. And as stated before, you earn some new items by completing it, so it's definitely worth the playthrough. And finally, we have easily my favourite of the bunch. The Mercenaries. This game mode sees you take on the role of a handful of operatives with the goal of eliminating as many enemies as possible. Broken up into four stages, we have the village, castle, island, and a new area called the docks to battle enemies in. With time bonuses as well as ammo and health scattered around the map, it's a race against time to eliminate as many enemies as possible before time runs out. You can of course end up dying, so there needs to be a delicate balance of killing enemies, but also not putting yourself in harm's way that much. At the end of each stage, you can earn a rank depending on your score, which can be increased by killing enemies and killing a certain number of enemies in a row. Overall, these additional items and game modes give the game a decent amount of longevity, and I can easily see myself coming back to beat a high score 
or just fuck around with the bonus weapons any day. There were a couple of brief points I didn't mention in the video, mainly because I'm inept and can't include the most obvious shit in my fucking script. The elephant in the room in this case being Ashley, the president's daughter. Generally, I never really had an issue with Ashley. Whenever I shoot enemies, she'll take cover behind me so as not to get in the way. Uh, if ever she gets captured by an enemy and dragged off, generally that was my fault for not paying attention. And I think the main reason people dislike Ashley is because she constantly screams and calls out to Leon. But I mean, put yourself in her shoes. She's been- Leon! I- as I was saying, she- Help! Ashley, can you give me one second? Help! Shut up, you fucking retard! Anyway, I'll admit she can be incredibly annoying to listen to sometimes, but overall, she never really bothered me enough to detract from the game as a whole. Another brief nitpick is that I never really found the magnums all that useful. More often than not, i just sell the ammo because I didn't have the space for the magnum and all my other guns did the job just fine. The game also includes a firing range where you can earn points and net yourself a few bottle cap action figures of characters from the game. They even make little noises when you interact with them too. I think that about does it for Resident Evil 4. So with that, let's wrap this up. In conclusion, Resident Evil 4 is a masterpiece. Whether you go into it looking for survival horror or action, you'll ultimately come out of it satisfied. Resident Evil 4 did set an unfortunate trend for the Resident Evil series after it came out, with Capcom wanting to constantly raise the stakes with more and more action thrown in. I see why so many Resident Evil fans despise Resident Evil 4 for the downward spiral it inadvertently caused. But personally, I don't really agree with that. I think of Resident Evil 4 as a fantastic horror game, just as good as any other entry in the series, and I think it's a little unfair to blame it for all the titles that came afterwards. It's been my favourite game in the series for a long time. It still is, and it's easily one of my top three games ever made. So, in conclusion, I urge all of you out there to pick up a copy and try it for yourself. Whether you're a newcomer to the series or a longtime fan, Resident Evil 4 is well worth your time. And as for me, this game will always have a place on my shelf. A big thanks for checking out the video. This one was a while in the making and I'm so happy I finally got it out the door. I hope that I've convinced you to try out Resident Evil 4 and if you've already played Resident Evil 4 then I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. I still have quite a few projects in the works now so I'll keep up with them as best as I can. Until then, uh, take it easy and with any luck I'll see you back here very soon.